Hey everyone, it's me Tiffany. Um, if you don't mind, I just wanted to share with you um, some things that I've just been really praying about for the last several weeks. Um, I'm sure many of you, uh, like myself, are just really trying to find um, a place of rest and peace um, and hope and wisdom and discernment um, in the Lord these days um, as our nation is really facing some bizarre uh, things, um, things I would never have expected to ever see in my lifetime. And so just really um, with the whole quarantine thing and, and how um, it's affecting people and how the rioting is affecting people and, and the race issues are affecting people and, and the government climate and how that's affecting people and, and just so many things going on that that really is just overwhelming to the mind. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so it's, it's kind of difficult to try to process thoughts um, when there's so much to try to process. And so I have really just found my peace. Um, when my brain just starts to get overloaded with what's going on in the world, I just have found uh, that as long as I'm staying in God's word, um, my mind stays um, in perfect peace with him. And I'm able to leave refreshed from that. And so I just wanted to share briefly um, with you um, just a few things that have come to my mind uh, since I've been reading um, with God um, and talking with him. Um, I'm sure all of you have been learning a lot from the Lord. I know many of you are probably seeking him with, you know, trying to find wisdom and speaking um, words of, you know, where are you, God, and what's happening to our nation? Are we going to be okay? And, you know, what's coming our way? Um, will things go back to normal? Or what does normal look like? Or what are the days ahead um, going to look like? And so um, I was reading through um, Ezekiel, and I got to chapter 16. And it's a, a really uh, not an encouraging passage of scripture. Um, the Lord talks about Jerusalem. Um, being a prostitute and how um, how he likens it to um, his children being uh, born and how they were not cared for very well. I mean, he, he finds them um, laying in their blood and he walks by and he tells them to live. And, and in that moment, they begin to flourish and they begin to grow and, and he washes them and he purifies them and he cleanses them and, and they begin to grow with strength and power and beauty. Um, and then a few verses later, it speaks about how the Lord um, comes, um, passes by them again and he sees that they are grown um, and he makes this covenant relationship with them like in marriage. And he begins to speak about how he adorns them with jewels and, and he washes them and purifies them. And, and they become famous um, because of the blessings that he has bestowed upon them. And just this amazing um, season of life that they are going through. Um, and then a few verses later, um, it begins to speak about how they, they shift. Um, they're no longer enjoying uh, their marital relationship with God. I'm um, again um, speaking it and liking it um, into a marriage relationship, but how they be begin to turn from that relationship with the Lord um, and how they begin to, to love and to worship uh, the very things that he gave them, um, their beauty, their splendor, their jewels, their power, their, you know, just the blessings that he has given them, that they begin to prostitute themselves to those things. And, and he likens it to them prostituting themselves out to the things of this world and that they have turned their back on their first love, um, that they have violated uh, their covenant relationship with the Lord and begin to pursue um, things of this world to take the place of what God had once filled in their life. Um, and it made me really think about us um, in this world. Um, we live in this amazing nation. Um, I know many right now today in this world say uh, it's not very amazing. Um, and sure, uh, we have a lot of things that we need to work on, but it's pretty phenomenal. Um, the freedom that we have been able to um, experience, um, to worship, um, to celebrate uh, a relationship with the Lord without ever questioning whether or not we would be imprisoned or whether our churches would be locked down or whether, you know, our kids would be taken from us because we're teaching them about Jesus Christ or whatever. Like we have absolute freedom to worship and to love and to care for people and to grow and to be all that God has for us. 
um, because that's kind of the supposed American way. That's what it is, that we're all created equal and we have the ability uh, to overcome whatever obstacle we have because we live in a society that we have the freedom to be able to do that. Um, obviously it doesn't happen for many and I know that's much of the struggle that's happening um, because there are many who haven't been able to live the American dream. Um, but it's, you know, it's why many from around the world come to this place is because they want freedom and they want to experience the, the American dream. Um, and so anyway, just thinking about how God has given us this nation um, and he's poured out on us um, the gift of freedom, the gift uh, to enjoy um, his blessing of having that freedom to worship him freely. And, and in that freedom, I think many many of us have grown complacent. Um, we've taken it for granted. Uh, we don't really pursue the relationship with the Lord the way he desires us to, um, because we know that it doesn't really matter. I mean, we'll go to church, we'll be good people, uh, we'll be kind to our neighbor, and that's all that really matters. But the Lord calls us to something so much more deeper than that. And, and pursuing the American dream, uh, we've lost sight of really what it means to be the body of Christ. I'm not, not saying everyone, but I feel like um, over the years, prosperity and wealth and, you know, growing up or building up yourself in the corporate ladder or making your way to become more and more famous. It's just, it's really ridiculous, you know, where Hollywood is at or where the sport industry is. And it's just the, the immense amount of money that these people are making in corporate world. And not that money is evil, but we've become so in love with success and power and greed and we've been given these amazing gifts by the Lord and we've just somewhat prostituted ourselves to this nation to the gifts the the, the dream of prosperity um, and many have lost their first love and so you know, as we go on to the book of Ezekiel 16, um, the Lord talks about how he brings this woe to them, like woe to you. Um, I will punish you. Um, I, I will turn my back on you. Um, you have prostituted yourself to other nations. You have prostituted yourself to the, the gifts and the, and the blessings that I've given to you. And you have turned your back on me. And so because you've turned your back on me, I will turn my back on you. And I will deliver you into the hands of your enemy. And I'm not saying that Ezekiel is a prophecy to what's happening to this nation. I'm not speaking anything prophetic as to this is what the Lord says. So this is what's going to happen. So please hear me. That's not what I'm saying. But what I do get from this is that the Lord is saying, repent. Because I am going to return. And I want you to be ready. And I'm not saying that he's returning in the next year or next three years or the next 10 years. But I am saying this season of turmoil and unrest it's a really good time for us as believers in Christ, or even for those of us who are not believers in Jesus Christ, to really begin to examine the scriptures and to really start asking ourselves, where is God in my life? Where have I put him? I mean, is he the center of my heart? Is he the longing of my life? Is he on the forefront of my mind? When I'm having a conversation with someone, am I thinking about how can I love this person the way Jesus loved them? When I'm having a, a, a a, an evening with the friends or if I'm at a sporting year event or if I'm at work like am I thinking how can I represent the love of Jesus the truth of Jesus and speak the word of Jesus to these people around me so that they can come to know the beauty and the love and the freeing gift of salvation like I've experienced and I think it's really crucial for us because of all this unrest that we're all like what is truth what makes sense what doesn't make sense who do I believe to really open up God's word and just ask him the author and the perfecter of our faith scripture says to ask him what truth is and ask him for his Holy Spirit to discern what's going on, to ask him for wisdom and to ask that his word would lead us um, to know how to live in these days because there is so much lying and so manipulation and so much media junk out there, mud slinging back and forth that we just honestly don't know who to turn to. And so I'm encouraging you. In fact, I'm imploring you um, to turn to God's word, to open up the scriptures and ask him, God, I don't know you very well. 
um, but I need to know who you are. I'm really anxious. I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know which way to turn or who to believe. I don't know what these days ahead look like. I feel angry. I feel, you know, violated. I feel whatever. Tell him those things. The book of Psalms is full of David crying out to the Lord, expressing um, anguish or anger or confusion or frustration or sorrow or sadness. And the Lord is faithful to answer you if you are genuinely pursuing him and desire to know him and to actually want to hear from him. Oftentimes we will turn to God and we ask him, you know, God, why is this happening? Or why is this suffering? Or why did this happen? And then he will send someone into our life with an answer or we'll open up scripture and he'll provide an answer or, um, you know, whatever. He'll speak to us in some form, like in the heart of hearts, you'll feel this presence of God leading you to his answer. And we don't like what he says. And so then many people just turn their face and say, well, God didn't hear me. He didn't want to answer me. Or maybe he was answering you. It just wasn't what you wanted to hear in that moment or the answer hasn't come yet. Um, or maybe God is just saying, I need you to pursue me in, in a relationship and not worry about the whys and the what's of it. I want you to just pursue me right now because you will find rest in me. The Lord says you will find hope in me. You will find joy in me. You will find forgiveness in me. You will find the ability to love and to care for and to forgive those who have wronged you. You can find reconciliation in me. You can find unity in me. You can find the beauty of what a real relationship is between God and you. If you turn to me, the Lord will answer you. The Lord will provide what it is you are needing if you are truly, genuinely open to receive what it is he has for you. And so again, I'm not prophesying what God's doing. I'm not saying he's returning in the next couple of days. I'm not saying that God's going to wipe us out with judgment, but I am saying it is a good time for us to really reflect on what is it that we're worshiping? What is it that we're putting our hope in? What is it that we're clinging to thinking it's going to make everything better? Is it the Lord or is it your job or is it your finances or is it your marriage or is it your children? that you're trying to cling to, thinking that that's where you're going to find your significance or your peace. Because as we've seen this year with COVID, jobs disappeared that quickly. Your friends disappeared because you can't be with them. Finances for many are just, so many are struggling, gone, because jobs are gone. And so I just, I don't mean to sound harsh. I don't mean to sound crabby. I don't mean to sound like this doom and gloom person, but I know that the Lord is calling us to turn and repent and to seek his face and to allow his Holy Spirit to work in us, to love, to allow him to love you, to receive that love and, and to allow yourself to just open your life to him and to begin to ask him, God, who are you? Show me who you are. How do I read scripture? We're still very much honored and blessed um, to live in a nation where we can open up commentaries, we can search out commentaries online to find out how to better understand scripture. If that's difficult to you, you still live in a country where you can go to your pastor or your friends and ask them questions. Don't be afraid to ask those questions. We've all gone through seasons of our life where we don't get what scripture says or what God's telling us or how to read the Bible. Like we've all been there and we will all continue to be at that place. I mean, I've been walking with the Lord since I was a junior in high school. I was raised in a Christian family, but still today at my age, there are many days that I I turn to the Lord and say, I don't get this. I don't understand this. Please help me through this season. And he is faithful, but we have to be patient and we have to trust him in that. And that's where it gets difficult. Um, and so I'm praying for all of you. Uh, I pray day and night for all of you um, in my community and in this nation, that we would be open to receive the working of the Holy Spirit in our life and that we would be willing to, to turn our eyes towards the Lord and that we would surrender uh, to our wills and to our desires um, to him and that we would surrender, that we would submit our life to his lordship and that we would uh, become just uh, joyful servants of the Lord in the process of repenting and receiving his grace. And so God, I thank you for these people and I thank you for the work that you're doing in each of us. Lord, we live in very difficult, dark days with so much anger and so much hurt and so much confusion and so much manipulation and so many different things going on right now that we just don't know what else to do. And so, God, I fall before you 
And I ask in the name of Jesus that you would open our eyes to see the goodness of your love, that we would see the true God, that we would see the true Jesus, God, that you would soften our hearts, that we would be willing to receive your love, to receive your Holy Spirit, to guide us and lead us in our daily lives. God, that we would be willing to surrender our lives to you, God, that we would let you into our lives. God, give us ears to hear your still, small voice. Open our minds to understand what it is you need for us to discern in these days and help us to stay faithful and committed to you as we love you and love those around us. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. I love you, Jesus. Amen. God bless everyone.